let's take a look at why the B-21 Raider is more like the Nighthawk than you think, and why it's a game changer for America and the West. On December 2nd, Northrop Grumman revealed to the world the first bomber of the 21st century, the B-21 Raider, a program that has been shrouded in secrecy. Today, we will take a look at what we know following the reveal, as well as what we can infer based on what we've been shown to this point. We'll start with the airframe. Like the B-2 before it, the B-21 is a flying wing design. Since a flying wing is efficient for high altitude, high subsonic operations, we can conclude that the B-21 will likely operate at high altitudes, possibly in the 50 to 70,000 feet range. The flying wing design also eliminates one of the key hindrances to radar cross-section or RCS, vertical tails. This is why most sixth generation fighter concepts show a tailless design. Getting back to the Raider, during the reveal we were only allowed to see the front of the aircraft and it was not completely towed out of the hangar. This was done to keep the overall geometry of the B-21 a secret for as long as possible. The B-21 program is being managed by the USAF's Rapid Capabilities Office or RCO and is using as many off-the-shelf parts as possible. This means that most of the engineering and design has gone into the airframe and geometry to reduce or lower the RCS as much as it can be. When it comes to the engines, we still don't know if the Raider will have two or four. What we do know, however, is that Pratt & Whitney is on contract to provide the power plants. And given the requirement to use off-the-shelf parts, would mean that the F-135 engines which are found on the F-35 are the most likely candidates. Furthermore, the dual engine inlets we were able to see from the reveal appear to be very low profile, so it is likely that the B-21 makes use of S-shaped inlet ducts to conceal the engine fan blades from radar. Stealth profiles actually involve three main aspects, radar, infrared, and acoustic. Given this, for the Raider to maintain a low IR signature, it is very likely that the F-135 engines installed in the B-21 will be non-afterburning. Since the rated thrust for the F-135 engine is 28,000 pounds at full military power, a pair of these would produce a maximum thrust of 56,000 pounds. Armed with this information, we can begin to estimate the weight and size of the B-21. Another clue that will help us with this calculation is the layout of the landing gear. Each main gear in a B-2 has four wheels, while the B-21 only shows two wheels per main gear. If we look at an aircraft with a similar landing gear configuration such as the 737, we can infer that the B-21 will weigh about 250 to 290,000 pounds and is about 75% the size of a B-2. And before we get into the unusual coatings that appear to be applied on the B-21, Today's video is brought to you by War Thunder, the most comprehensive vehicle combat game ever made that allows you to play more than 2,000 tanks, planes, helicopters, and ships while battling in dynamic, combined arms battles against other players. Each vehicle is superbly detailed and modeled down to their individual components, offering you a highly immersive combat experience. The collection of vehicles in War Thunder is amazing, spanning over 100 years of development from the 1920s through today. No matter your skill level or experience, War Thunder offers intense PvP battles at various immersion levels for all playstyles. And you don't need any special hardware or expensive controls. You can fly any aircraft using nothing more than a mouse and keyboard thanks to the game's intuitive mouse aim mode. I enjoy taking flight in iconic historical aircraft like the P-51 Mustang, and I think you'll like seeing these various vehicles in action. The graphics are outstanding, especially the fire and smoke effects along with the vehicle details. So play War Thunder now on PC, PlayStation, or Xbox. When you register using my link, you'll get a large free bonus pack that includes multiple premium vehicles, a premium account, boosters, and more. Getting back to the Raider, during the reveal, it looked as if the aircraft was coated in a white or gray skin. Although we assume that the final production version could have a dark top coating such as those found in the B-2, the lighter coating could be related to several aircraft that have been spotted with chrome or mirror-like coatings recently. So far, F-22 Raptors, F-35 Lightnings, and even F-117 Nighthawks have been seen with these chrome-like finishes. The advantages of these coatings are thought to help against targeting systems. I've done videos on both the Chrome Raptor and Chrome Lightning, I'll leave links in the description below. Another interesting aspect of the B-21 Raider reveal is that there do not appear to be any visible sensors or antennas protruding from the airframe. It is thought that the advanced coatings and surface of the Raider can be used as part of its integrated sensors, which help it maintain its stealth profile. The Raider is also designed as a modular platform, making it easy to upgrade specific components or sections of the aircraft without impacting other areas. Additionally, 
The software systems are open architecture which allow the Raiders' complex avionics and sensor integrations to grow over time, as well as be adapted for weapon systems that are not available today. The Raider is capable of carrying both conventional and nuclear munitions, and can be flown as a manned or unmanned platform. More than just a bomber, the Raider will be able to perform intelligence, surveillance, reconnaissance, or ISR missions, and integrate with allied partners, similar to how the F-35 does today. Additionally, the Raider will likely be able to serve as a drone mothership, controlling swarms of attritable, less expensive drones, which can set off enemy defenses, extend jamming ranges, serve as reconnaissance extenders, and even neutralize enemy ground targets or fighters. Pricing-wise, this bomber is being built on a cost-plus contract, meaning that the Air Force pays for all of Northrop's allowed expenses, plus additional payment to allow for a profit. Essentially, this means that the Air Force is assuming all the risk in this project, allowing Northrop the time and money to figure it out. Impressively, the Raider program is within budget and on schedule. Current estimates have the Raider costing $700 million a copy. This contracting structure has dictated how large the B-21 is, why it looks like the B-2, and is driving several design decisions. To understand why, let's take a closer look at the development of the Raider. The flying wing in Northrop go all the way back to the N1M, which was built in 1940. This was quickly followed by the N9M, which flew in 1942. The N9M was a scaled-down technology demonstrator for the B-35 flying wing bomber. A flying wing was desirable for a bomber since they can fly higher, faster, and more efficiently than conventional aircraft designs. In 1948, Northrop produced the YB-35, a full-scale strategic bomber. Interestingly, the YB-35, despite obsolete piston engines, had superior range and performance than the Convair B-36. By making use of jet engine technology, the next iteration in Northrop's flying wing was the YB-49. Although these early examples of flying wing bombers never entered production, during flight tests, it was noticed that these large bombers had a smaller radar cross-section. At the time, this was mostly seen as an interesting byproduct. However, by the 1970s, everyone had integrated radar, especially air defense systems. As a result, low observability or stealth began to take priority in advanced aircraft design. After a Soviet mathematician published a paper entitled Method of Edge Waves in the Physical Theory of Diffraction in 1971, a Lockheed Skunk Works engineer used the translated copy to develop a mathematical equation, which applied the theories from the paper to calculate the radar cross-section of a three-dimensional object. This led directly to Lockheed's F-117 Nighthawk. The F-117 featured many jagged angles and surfaces to deflect or divert a radar signal. In order to focus on the airframe design and radar cross-section as much as possible, the Nighthawk used many existing components so they wouldn't have to be reinvented for this new aircraft. For example, the F-117 uses the same F-404 engines as those found on the legacy F-18 Hornet and the flight computers from the F-16. I'm working on a video all about the Nighthawk. Be sure you click subscribe and then mash the bell so you get notified as soon as it comes out. Back to Northrop, who had participated in the competition to build a stealth fighter that would become the F-117 but lost out to Lockheed. Northrop continued to work on stealth technology and along with the lessons learned from the fighter competition and the ever-increasing computational power of computers developed the B-2 Spirit. The Raider is an improved version of the B-2 in almost every way. However, it does appear to be smaller and less expensive than the B-2. Why is this? Well, from the beginning, the same design process that was used on the F-117, leveraging existing technologies to focus on the airframe and RCS, has also been applied to the Raider. As previously mentioned, the B-21 likely uses the same engines as those found in the F-35, shares many design commonalities with the B-2, and uses as many off-the-shelf avionics, ejection seats, and other components as possible. In this way, you can say that the Raider and the Nighthawk took the same approach to aircraft development. The Raider will allow the Air Force to go to a two-bomber force, operating B-21s as a stand-in bomber and the B-52 as a standoff bomber. As for how many Raiders will be acquired, that number is somewhere around 100 examples. Interestingly, Australia has expressed an interest in obtaining the B-21, as the RAAF has never really found a replacement for the long-range F-111. Australia getting B-21s would help the program immensely, as we have seen with the F-35, there's definitely an economy of scale when other nations purchase a platform. The strategic importance of the B-21 cannot be understated. It is incredible to think how quickly the B-21 Raider has become a reality. In 2010, the program was started, 
with the contract being awarded in 2015 and the first flight scheduled for 2023. That is a quick turnaround as compared to timelines for the V-22 Osprey and Joint Strike Fighter. The B-21 is also likely critical to the success of Northrop Grumman. Furthermore, the B-21 is likely a part of a system of systems which includes the Next Generation Air Dominance or NGAD fighter. Thanks again to today's sponsor, War Thunder. Play now on PC, PlayStation, or Xbox. When you register using my link, you'll get a large free bonus pack that includes multiple premium vehicles, a premium account, boosters, and more. And thank you to my patrons and channel members who directly contribute to the making of these videos. If you'd like to become a member, I'll leave links in the description below. The B-21 Raider is a game changer. Now you know!